Oi, pessoal, meu nome é Pedro Girardi, eu sou gerente do Biscuit, nosso programa de preparação para estudar fora aqui na Brasa. E hoje de tarde eu estou com os Admissions Officers de Carleton College, onde eu estudo aqui nos Estados Unidos. E eles vão conversar um pouco com vocês sobre como é a universidade de Carleton e sobre como que os Admissions Officers veem alunos internacionais, mais especificamente brasileiros, no processo de admissão e responder algumas dúvidas que vocês fizeram. Ok. Muito bom. Boa tarde. Vamos falar de Carlton College, but we are going to do it in English. Um, this is Jamie, I am Holly, and this is Charlie. And we are three admissions officers for Carlton, and we all do substantial international recruitment. Great. All right. So I'd like to first talk um, about Carlton. We are a small liberal arts and sciences institution located in Northfield, Minnesota. Um, so just outside of the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul in the southeastern part of the state, we have about 2,000 undergraduate students. About 10% of our students are international, but about 24% of our freshman class speaks a language other than English at home. In terms of who comes to Carleton, it is students from all 50 states and about 50 nations, as well as Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Washington DC, the capital of the US. What I want to emphasize is that a college is not a collegium. We are also not an universidade, right? This is not a university, not a college, um, like you would think of one. What a college, a liberal arts college means in the US is that we have a philosophy for our academics that revolves around both breadth and depth of study. We want every student who is a scientist to also be an articulate grant writer. We want every student who is an artist to also understand microfinance. So having lateral thinking abilities, interdisciplinary ideas, um, and so what that means for us is as an undergraduate institution, all of our resources go to the undergraduate student. Every single student will get a Bachelor of Arts degree from Carleton. This is the first four years of your academic journey after high school. In compared to a university like you might find at Harvard University, at the University of Pennsylvania, all of our resources are allocated to undergraduate students. We do not have extra colleges or schools that confer master's degrees, medicine degrees, um, anything beyond the Bachelor of Arts. Therefore, all of our resources are aimed at the undergraduates. All of our classes are being taught by professors, people who have the top degree in their field. Um, you also have a really small class size. 16 is the average size class at Carleton. We have a nine to one student faculty ratio and are actually number one in undergraduate teaching currently. So if you need those statistics, why should I be interested in Carleton? Those are some of the reasons. Later on, Jamie will also outline what makes Carleton feel special. Um, outside of the academic philosophy, we are also committed to providing 100% of demonstrated need for all of our admitted students. Yes, this is even if you are an international student. Um, we will be sure to cover 100% of your family's demonstrated need all four years. This is not merit-based scholarship. It does not depend on a particular <coughs> GPA or major that you declare. Um, as a matter of fact, you cannot declare your major until your sophomore year. So really the idea of liberal arts, that breadth is taking place through classroom exploration for your first two years. Um, I also want to underscore that Carleton is an excellent institution, even if it's not yet on your radar. We are a top 10 school here in the United States, number seven currently, and we also have the number one four-year graduation rate. That means of every single school in the US, our students are graduating most frequently in four years. You are not going to be paying for extra terms, extra years of school if you come to Carleton College. Um, so you understand now our academic philosophy with liberal arts breadth, our financial aid policy, 100% of demonstrated need. We are in Northfield, Minnesota. You understand a college versus university, not collegio, not universidade, Carleton College. Um, and I now would like Jamie to explain some of the 
cool, quirky aspects of what makes Carlton Carlton. Yeah, thanks, Holly. So there are a lot of different qualities that are similar at many liberal arts colleges. So no matter what liberal arts college you are looking at, we're going to talk about our small classes, our dormitories, all the clubs. And there are a couple of things about Carleton that are distinctive in this world of hundreds of liberal arts colleges. The first of those is our trimester calendar. Typically at a university or a liberal arts college in the United States, you're going to take eight classes per year or 32 classes by the time you graduate. Carleton's calendar is set up in trimesters. So instead of taking four classes over 15 weeks, you'll take three classes at a time for 10 weeks. So every year it's the same 30 weeks of classes, but instead of eight classes, you'll get nine classes. And that one extra class really defines some qualities of the Carleton experience. And the first quality is flexibility. Students are able to tailor their experience a little bit more because they have the room to take one extra class per year. They have the room to add in that extra ele elective or to go deeper into their major. But also, Carleton tends to attract the kind of student who, when they hear about taking an extra class, they get excited, unapologetically so. Students who are eager to learn in the company of other people who like to learn. So those 36 classes instead of 32 classes, that's the first thing that's distinctive, our trimester calendar. Another thing that's distinctive about Carleton, and this is especially important for international students to understand when they're coming from so far away to come to college, is that 75% of Carleton students will participate in some kind of study abroad program. The students who choose to come to Carleton are students who understand that the world is a big place worth exploring. And so you'll find that Carleton runs programs all over the world, from Japan to South Africa to the Czech Republic to Ireland to Washington, DC, in areas everything from politics to studio art to marine biology to public health Carleton students are really eager to go and explore the world. That 75% rate of studying abroad is amazing. In the United States, typically only about 15% of college and university students will study abroad. And the fact that three quarters of Carleton students study abroad is something really worth knowing, especially for international students who themselves are bringing their own international global experiences to our campus. Another thing to know about Carleton that's distinctive in the world of liberal arts colleges is that we care very deeply about making sure that our students understand the connections between what they're learning in the classroom and how that will relate to what happens to their life after their four years here. Our Career Center provides a number of different opportunities for students to really think critically about how what they're learning in physics class and literature classes and gender studies classes might connect to possible careers and jobs after Carleton. And again, because our community is so globally minded, we understand that some of our international students might want to stay in the US, might want to go back to their home country, or might want to go to a totally different country to work. So our Career Center is really equipped to work with students who have global ambitions for after they graduate. Three quarters of Carleton students will go on to graduate school, and our Career Center is really adept at helping all of our students figure out the right kind of graduate programs or jobs that will wait them after Carleton. I'd like to do a screen share for that Please. one. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, we have, oh no, this one, hopefully a screen share. Mm. Pedro, I'll get you the image we want to screen share there. Okay. One of the things that I find particularly gratifying as a Carleton alumna is that you'll find Carleton alumni in fields all over the place, whether you're talking about medicine, scientific research, law, education, the arts, corporate finance, entrepreneurial work. Carleton alumni are really found in every corner of all sorts of different types of jobs. And so through that screen share, what you'll be able to see is all of the different paths that students can take from the major that they have at Carleton to the job that they might end up working in five, 10, or 20 years after be being a student at Carleton. One of the key things to know about our community is that unlike many liberal arts colleges, we actually have an incredible strength in the sciences. And at this point, about half of our students are majoring in mathematics or hard sciences. 55%, I'll say that again, over half of our students are majoring in the hard sciences or mathematics. This is really important for understanding the values of Carleton. 
Now, I confess, I was an economics major at Carleton. I was not a science major. I did not feel, though, like I had made a bad decision here, but I did appreciate that Carleton was a place that cared as deeply about philosophy and classics and literature and history as it does about physics and geology and chemistry and neuroscience. This is a place where we care about making sure that all of our students go out into the world with the ability to think like a scientist, the ability to use empirical data, the ability to go about problems in the way that scientists typically approach them. So knowing about the resources that we have, if you're interested in science, or even just knowing about our community values and caring about science as a way to take care of future generations of the world is an important value to know about Carleton. I think it's also, Holly mentioned this, but it's also really important to know about our location. We're in a small town in rural Minnesota. We're in a place where students have to be pretty thoughtful and deliberate about choosing to come to Carleton. You don't end up here by accident. And that thoughtfulness really courses through the rest of our campus life. We tend to attract students who are really thinking carefully about the classes that they're taking, the extracurriculars that they get involved in. I know one of the students submitted a question about, you know, what kind of extracurriculars should I be involved in? And at Carleton, we like all sorts of extracurriculars. And you'll see that there are Carleton students who have hip hop radio station shows and who are involved in Model United Nations and who are volunteering at the nursing home and who are playing sports here. Some students might dabble in a little bit of each of those areas and other students might devote all of their time to one or two of those areas. We want all kinds of students in our community. And because Northfield is such a small town, we find that our students really do get immersed in the life of our campus community and the town of Northfield surrounding us. Finally, I think one of the things that's distinctive about Carleton really is the people, and I've mentioned a couple of those ways that the people at Carleton are distinctive. That love of learning, that sort of enthusiasm for all different kinds of academic subjects is something that is not that common to find in colleges and universities in the States. Typically, students are a little bit more focused. I'm sure you're feeling this in Brazil as well, where you feel like maybe you've been told since an early age you need to know exactly what you want to do. Carleton does a really wonderful job of supporting students' multiple interests and not asking you to choose that one thing that you want to pursue. Our students are also very down to earth, pretty humble. They're more eager in supporting the success of the entire community instead of their own individual success. So while our students might be ambitious, they're very hardworking, they also are keen to involve others in their projects and others in their success. There's also a really delightful sense of humor that comes through in our community. I think part of that is because of the winters that we have here. In order to deal with the temperatures that are, you know, negative 20 Celsius or so, it's important to have a sense of humor. It's important to be able to, you know, pack a snowball and throw it at a friend before going to chemistry class. It's important to be able to laugh at yourself when you slip on the ice. But it's also important to have a good sense of humor when the academics are so rigorous. We tend to attract students who want that rigorous academics, but who don't want to take themselves too seriously. So those are a couple of the ways that Carleton students tend to be a little bit different from students at other colleges where they maybe take themselves a little more seriously. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Um, so I want to quickly show some screen, <laughs> share some screens regarding the application process. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some information regarding international applications. Um, so what are we looking for in terms of testing, test scores? What is early decision versus regular decision? Um, how are international applicants different from domestic applicants? Um, and so this is available to you online. I would definitely recommend looking through the admissions requirements. What is a TOEFL? Have you taken the TOEFL? Um, and if you plan on applying for aid, the certification of finances. And with that, I also want to show you we do have a page for aid for international students. Um, and so there is this aid page as well, which lets us know um, or lets you know what is available for aid, um, how you apply for aid. Um, because again, we are going to give 100% of every student's demonstrated need um, as soon as they are admitted. Um, so those are two important screens that I want you to be able to see and uh, reflect back on well, during your process. We also had a lot of questions regarding the application essay. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're applying to Carleton, 
most often students are using the common application. We also accept the coalition application and the QuestBridge application. Um, there's never a fee to apply to Carleton. It is a free application process regardless of which app you are using, but every single application is going to require an essay. So we are looking at your application holistically. We are looking at the whole app. Um, this means that everything that you submit is a data point that helps us construct a single student. The application essay, yes, is important. It is not only a way for us to see your English abilities, but it is also a way for you to talk about yourself. Who are you? What is important to you? Um, maybe you reflect on an experience that helped you grow. Maybe you reflect upon an experience that made you realize, wow, I might be an adult because of this. Um, we want to know your perspective, who you are, um, and what you are going to bring to our community. As Jamie talked about, our students are really excited to get involved at Carleton. Maybe this essay is a way to show what kind of community member you will be or you have been. Um, and so if you have questions about application essays, there are lots of online resources. Um, and it is not like an essay for school. We do not want to see something that is very cut and dry. This application should reflect who you are um, and the writing skills that you possess. Are there any questions coming through? Anything for us? Hello. <laughs> Pedro? Can you hear us? OK. Yeah, yeah, I can Okay. He <laughs> um, just woke up. <laughs> yeah. if there, I'm going to call Charlie back for questions. Um, if there are any, let us know through the chat. Um, I know there were also some questions about test scores. Our testing is very um, American-centric. Right? So the SAT, the ACT, those are tests. We need one of them, either an SAT or an ACT. We also know that the culture of test prep is very different in the US than in Brazil. Um, so yes, our averages are about a 710 across the board. For the SAT, our middle 50 for the ACT is like a 30 to a 33. But that also means that there are students scoring below this domestically and internationally. Um, so please keep in mind that we do need a test, um, but there are no minimums here. Again, the holistic review, we're looking at the whole person, the whole application. Yeah. I think one of the things that's important to know also is that there really statistically is not a difference between scoring a 790 and an 800 on a test. So if you feel confident in your scores, even if it's not that perfect 800, Please move on. Devote your time to something else more interesting that will make you a more interesting candidate for us as well as a more interesting person in your life. Yeah. Anything to add, Charlie? I think that's, that's useful. Thank Great. you so much. One of the, there is one minimum, actually, at mm, Carleton. The TOEFL. The TOEFL mm -hmm. score. We do require that all of our international students score at least a 100 on the TOEFL or a 7 on the IELTS. We yeah. think it's really important that you come to Carleton with the ability to immediately dive in to the academic culture here as well as the residential culture. And being able yeah. to demonstrate your English abilities is a really important part of us reviewing your application. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Pedro? Uh, all right. If I had to add on some points, First of all, I'd like to say that as I call myself, I'm very proud that most people are happy with the choice they make. Mm -hmm. And that's the very nice statistic they're going to find online. Like about 97% <laughs> of students who choose to come back here. And that's something that really reflects on the mindset of the people and the campus in general here about how satisfied they are and about how much they like the experience. And that's very much because there is a personality of the average Carlton that most people fall into that is being humble, being open to listen to other people. And I think that if you fit this criteria, Carlton may be a good experience for you and it may be something nice that you should consider. Uh, oh, another thing that I, I think sorry. it's very uh, important to say maybe it's about the essay again because that's the biggest question that Brazilian students have nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'd like to ask you because many people uh, try to apply the mindset of, you know, what should I say? What shouldn't I say? How can I say? How? What's the best format to say what I want to say? And 
I'd like to hear like from you saying to all Brazilian students who are applying to universities in the US, like, is there a specific form that you're looking for or the person can like, as you said, just be himself or herself and write whatever he or she wants in the way it's the most appropriate? Because I think that many Brazilian students uh, don't express themselves as well as they should in an application. Mm -hmm. But I think that especially for a university uh, or a college like Carleton, that has a specific, you know, feeling and is looking for a certain kind of student, I think that opening up may help a lot mm -hmm. uh, in the application process. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? It's not easy. One of the things that's <laughs> difficult is that if we ask the students to write an essay about a famous writer, even if they've never read that person's work, if they're smart, they can get on their smartphone, look at Spark Notes, turn out a good paper in about two hours. But when someone asks you to write about yourself, it's something difficult. So there are a lot of different kinds of prompts on the common application mm -hmm. and on the coalition application. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to write about yourself, write about something you care about. Write about something you've done. You can, you can choose a subject that makes you feel more comfortable. Another thing is that my father is originally from Brooklyn, which is a big city in the United States. And to get anywhere in Brooklyn, he felt that he had to show how great he was. And so he looked at my essays 35 years ago and said, Charlie, these essays are terrible. You're not telling anybody how great you are. And so your essay is going to sit on the bottom of the pile and nobody's going to pull that essay out of a thousand good essays and say, yeah, I want that guy because it's too, too, too humble, too sort of down to earth. The problem is I actually went back and tried to write that other essay for him and I gave him a copy and he looked at me and said, you know, Charlie, I apologize. I'm your father, but when I read this essay, even I don't like you. And so, <laughs> so I think what you're going to find is that very often – they, you feel this pressure that if you don't convey how great you are, we won't get it. But in fact, that's why we have letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so many different parts to the application. So I think the pressure isn't all on the essay alone. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. isn't. You should be able to take a deep breath and then and then write something that you think is is useful. You can get feedback, but if you get feedback from 30 people, by the time you're done, it won't be you anymore. Mm -hmm. But if you but if you show it, to, for example, when I write, I write fast. And sometimes I don't catch my own typos. Mm -hmm. So so get a, a teacher or somebody who can help you to give you some good advice on that. And I think at some point you have to draw a line and say, but this is my essay. And so yeah. I, feel, I, feel, I feel like this yeah. is me. I'm ready. Yeah. Hit send. For sure. And then you'll find the typo afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all for listening, for being here. Um, I do want to share again our contact information. So if you do have questions about international admissions, about our processes, about the application process, et cetera, please feel free to get in contact with Jamie Anthony, Holly Buttry, and Charlie Kogan. As you can also see here, we are all alumni of this institution. We went through the same process and ended up choosing Carleton College as our institution various years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is what we have for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you. for watching. Right. Bye. Oops, that's the wrong signal. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. I think it's going to be very useful for many of our mentees and Brazilian students in general to take a look at what Carlton is. Great. What they're looking for. And yeah. Thank you again. See you soon. Yes. Bye, Pedro. Muito obrigada. Bye. Bye.